Laptops often make you choose between performance and mobility. You can have a powerful gaming notebook that's as portable as a cinder block, or a compact laptop that can hardly run Chrome. Enter the Yoga Slim 7 Pro X, or the Lenovo Slim 7 Pro X if you're in the States. While not classified as a gaming laptop, it packs a huge punch with mobility in mind. It's a device that aims to strike a perfect balance, and after using it extensively for the last two weeks, today I'll present a heap of impressive benchmarks and tell you why I've decided to make the 7 Pro X my daily laptop. Last month, Lenovo sent me an engineering sample of the device that I made a first impressions video on. Since then, they've sent me a retail unit for proper testing, and the results are undeniably impressive. Now, while you should always take sponsored videos like this one with a grain of salt, all the data that I'm sharing with you today is entirely objective at least until brands find a way to scale their Cinebench score with how much they pay me. Before diving into performance though, let's explore the laptop itself. Under the hood is an AMD Ryzen 9 6800HS Creator Edition 8-core 16-thread CPU, 32 gigs of dual-channel DDR5 memory at 6400 speed, an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3050 with 4 gigs of GDDR6, and a 1TB PCIe Gen 5 NVMe M.2 SSD. While those are the specs of the unit I have with me, the Yoga Slim 7 Pro X can be configured online with varying RAM and drive capacities, or an even faster Ryzen 9 6900HS. All of the hardware that makes this device poised for heavy-duty content creation, gaming, and streaming is encased in a finely machined storm gray chassis with a gorgeous 14.5-inch display. Featuring a 3K resolution of 3072 by 1920, that's 16 by 10 for those wondering, the PeerSight IPS display sports a 120Hz refresh rate, up to 400 nits brightness, G-Sync support, and 100% sRGB color space and volume, meaning the color accuracy is fully retained at any brightness level. The image quality is so good, whether you're color grading, streaming movies, or gaming, it's no surprise this laptop once debated with Keanu Reeves over who was more breathtaking. Overall, the color reproduction and sharpness are top-notch, and with a pair of good eyeballs, this display is truly a visual feast. At purchase, the 7 Pro X can also be configured with a touch display. On a traditional laptop like this one, with a lid that only flips back 180 degrees, it's not a feature that I've personally found much use for, and I'd rather not gunk up the screen with fingerprints, but it is a nice option if touch screens are something you're into. The device comes preloaded with Windows 11, supports Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.1, and features a healthy amount of physical I.O. On the right is a power button, one USB 3.2 Gen 1 Type-A port, combo audio jack, and an on-off switch for the full HD 1080p webcam. Down the left side is another Type-A port and two USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-C 10 gigabit per second ports. They support power delivery 3.0 for power brick charging and DisplayPort 1.4 alt mode. This allowed me to easily connect the gaming monitor I have in my bedroom for an instant boost in screen real estate, and I absolutely love using the laptop in this way with my dockable setup. With a full set of peripherals to complement its wicked speed, I found the 7 Pro X to be nearly indistinguishable from a desktop PC, which is a bold statement for a 14-inch laptop. Equally cool is being able to fully undock the device and toss it into a bag in under 10 seconds, rivaling the flexibility of an Olympic gymnast. Even without connected peripherals, the laptop's input devices function remarkably well in my book. The white backlit keys are tactile with a hint of resistance and travel that's not too shallow. This, paired with sensible key spacing and positioning, make for a pleasant typing experience that allows me to maintain the average words per minute that I typically achieve on a mechanical keyboard. The rounded comfort edge design of the body also ensures that your wrists are comfortable while typing away. Quietly, I might add. Now, one of my common gripes of laptop keyboards is when you're forced to hold down the function key to use important shortcuts, like volume control. Fortunately, that's not the case here. Volume and brightness adjustment are the primary actions for the F keys they're bound to, which makes more sense given how often these functions get used. The trackpad is huge, but somehow just small enough to not interfere with the palm rest area when typing. Just like the trackpad on my engineering sample, tracking, tapping, and gestures are precise and responsive. As a springboard trackpad, you do have the option to physically press it with one or two fingers to register a left or right mouse click. The resistance is a little high for my liking, which is fine because I prefer tapping anyway, but it's worth pointing out for those of you who like to click. Two strips of upward-firing Harman speakers line the outer edges of the keyboard and feature Dolby Atmos audio. While the bass is woefully absent, as you might expect, the remaining frequencies are represented surprisingly well for a laptop. They also get impressively loud without distorting at max volume so your ears don't bleed. 
Now, this laptop wouldn't be able to market itself as a formidable on-the-go ally if it always needed an outlet nearby. But fortunately, the battery life of the 7 Pro X does not disappoint. At 75% screen brightness, the 70 watt hour battery lasted for six and a half hours of nonstop video streaming on Amazon Prime. And in my web browsing test, which included continuous use of Google Chrome and occasional YouTube viewing, the device once again held up for roughly six and a half hours. In theory, I could use this laptop at LAX airport for an hour, plus an entire flight across the US from LA to New York without ever unraveling the power cord. I would have plenty of juice left over too if I was at a lower screen brightness. And sure, a powerful gaming laptop might churn out 50 to 60% more frames per second in a game. But given that most of my gaming notebooks hardly offer an hour of web browsing when unplugged, the battery life of the 7 Pro X trounces those devices by roughly 5 to 600%. This doesn't just make the 7 Pro X better for travel. When I'm at home, I never use a gaming laptop for casual web browsing because the large and hefty power brick is a hassle, not to mention the large and hefty laptop. So I just browse on my phone instead. For the last two weeks, I've been using the 7 Pro X in my living room, the kitchen, at the dining table, and in my backyard. Obviously, there's a huge place in my heart for face melting frame rates, but there's also value in having the freedom to compute anytime, anywhere, especially when you don't need to compromise greatly on performance to do so. That finally brings us to benchmarks and how the Yoga Slim 7X performs in the real world. In the CPU benchmark Cinebench R23, the Ryzen 9 6800HS achieved a single thread score of 1509, greatly outpacing desktop CPUs like the Intel Core i7 7700K and the Ryzen 7 1700X. With a multi-thread score of 11,959, it trails confidently ahead of the Core i9 9880H and the Ryzen 7 1700X once again. Pulling data from CG Director's database, the chip in this laptop is practically on par with a Ryzen 7 3700X. Sheesh. With this in mind, it's no surprise that the 7 Pro X handles Adobe Premiere Pro flawlessly. Editing 4K 30fps footage from my Sony a7S III is an effortless task with no stuttering in playback, whether it be in real time or all the way up to 16x speed. From color grading to adding effects, the entire editing process is smooth from start to finish and promotes a highly efficient workflow. For the render test, I exported a 10 minute timeline with 4K 30fps footage that contained color grading effects and several transitions. With a bitrate of 45 megabits per second, the laptop rendered the file in just over six minutes, which is pretty damn zippy. While the Yoga Slim's capabilities in Premiere are largely thanks to the Ryzen 6800HS, the CPU isn't working alone here. To boost computing performance, Premiere leverages CUDA acceleration offered by supported GPUs, the RTX 3050 being on that list. The 3050 is also NVIDIA Studio certified, meaning it's equipped to use NVIDIA Studio drivers and specialized SDKs to ensure the best performance and stability in creative apps like Adobe Premiere Pro, After Effects, Illustrator, Lightroom, DaVinci Resolve, Blender, Maya, and a whole lot more. The combination of powerful hardware and optimized software delivers standout performance here, giving content creators everywhere a reason to rejoice. Now, I would argue that creative work is what the 7 Pro X does best, but that doesn't mean it can't have a little fun on the side. Accompanying the Ryzen 9 CPU, the RTX 3050 is miles ahead of any integrated graphics chip and delivers satisfying frame rates across a breadth of titles, though more demanding AAA games will need to have their resolution or settings taken down a notch. Rainbow Six Siege was the first esports title I tested, and it's a title that taxes both the CPU and GPU a fair amount. At 1920x1080 max settings, we saw an average frame rate of 124 and a 1% low of 90, which is great, even by esports standards. Valorant is a CPU-intensive esports title, so having faith in our Ryzen 6800HS, I tested the game at the display's native 3K resolution. At max settings, we saw 149 frames per second on average and a 1% low of 87, which are very respectable numbers that make the gameplay super fast and silky smooth on that 120Hz display. The last two games I tested were Far Cry 5 and Red Dead Redemption 2, neither of which are a walk in the park to run. The way I tested these games was by targeting the highest resolution and settings I could muster while maintaining over 60 FPS on average. In the end, I was able to run Far Cry 5 at 1920x1200 at normal quality settings with an average FPS of 64 and a 1% low of 43. Red Dead Redemption 2 was able to run at the same resolution on low to medium settings with Nvidia DLSS in performance mode, giving us 61 frames per second on average and a 1% low of 47. With the right settings, both titles were very playable and still looked great, showing that the RTX 3050 is well suited for casual gaming. 
Additionally, having DLSS to boost performance while retaining or even improving image quality with the use of AI is an absolute godsend for the many games that support it. It's worth noting that graphical performance also benefits from the laptop's built-in MUX switch, which creates a hardware-level line of communication between the GPU and display. This greatly reduces the latency that's incurred from a software-based solution and in turn translates to an increase in raw power. On top of gaming, the 7 Pro X also proved to be a competent laptop for live streaming. During my two-week test period, I streamed to the Workhorse Twitch channel a handful of times at 1920x1080, 60 frames per second, with a bitrate of 8,500 kilobits per second. And I'm happy to report that I encountered zero issues, whether I was just chatting with my USB webcam, playing Valorant, or hosting a watch party for Monday movie night. There's no better way to test out a stream than by getting the feedback of chat, and everyone unanimously agreed that the stream was just as smooth and sharp as it is on my usual streaming desktop featuring a Ryzen 9 3950X and Radeon RX 6900 XT. Plus, with NV Encoder on board the RTX 3050, you can task the GPU to process all of the live encoding. It's a great way to free up resources on the Ryzen 6800HS if you're running CPU-intensive games or workloads during your live stream. Now, having this much power in a compact form factor understandably calls into question the thermals and acoustics of such a device, but this is yet another area where the 7 Pro X delivers. When editing or gaming, both CPU and GPU temps hovered between 81 to 82 degrees Celsius the vast majority of the time, staying well below T-junction max. With the gaming test being a 30-minute run in Red Dead Redemption 2, that's not too shabby. The only time I raised an eyebrow was during one or two temperature spikes that briefly throttled the CPU, but each spike only lasted about 10 to 15 seconds before temps plummeted back down to the low 80s. Had we seen longer or more frequent periods of throttling, it would raise concerns, but the laptop's heat was adequately controlled outside of these very brief instances. Acoustically, the 7 Pro X gets the loudest under gaming loads, but even then it's nowhere near the jet engine sound of many high-end gaming laptops. In a quiet office or classroom, it's probably audible enough to garner unwanted attention, but the least bit of ambient noise in, say, a coffee shop should be plenty to keep a low profile. Better still is that the fans emit a lower frequency than the high-pitched whine I'm used to. It actually produces a gentle white noise effect that's somewhat relaxing and makes me a little sleepy. The thermal and acoustic performance of the laptop shines due to a process of custom performance tuning known as Lenovo X-Power. A heavy stack of software and hardware optimizations have facilitated an extensive list of refinements, such as enhanced cooling techniques for cooler, quieter operation, and optimized tuning for GPU and VRAM overclocking. X-Power also allows dynamic control of the power delivery, automatically delegating power between the CPU and GPU based on the task at hand for peak performance. All of these optimizations ensure that the hardware is always performing at its highest potential. In short, what makes the Yoga Slim 7 Pro X so appealing to me is that it doesn't just max out all of its stats in one category while neglecting the others. It's an incredibly well-rounded device that effectively does it all, making it the Swiss Army knife of laptops, and in my opinion, an excellent candidate for a daily driver. But as always guys, let me know what you think about this one and why it would or wouldn't work for you. Before you go, also toss a like on the video before you go, get subscribed for more tech content coming at you really soon, and I will see you guys in the next one.